Welcome to worship the second Sunday after Pentecost, Sunday, June 14th. Thank you for staying home and staying safe. But also, I want to thank you for all the creative ways that you are doing ministry during this time. Your calls, your visits on driveways, your cards to each other, and the laughs that you have shared online are welcomed and needed during this time. The building is closed, but ministry is alive and well, thanks to all of you and so many others. Pastor Ben and I are also readily available by phone or by email. Both of us have Zoom conversations. During the week, Pastor Ben's are on Tuesday at 2 p.m. and mine are on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. We also have a congregational coffee hour over Zoom at 10 o'clock every Sunday. And for all of this contact information, you can check out our website or our Facebook page or the last email that you received on Friday from the church office. 
Assisting with worship today are our director of worship, Ruth Benning, Jan Matson, and preaching is Pastor Ben. With that, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and river, bluff and valley. Amen. 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 In the light of this new day, let us confess our sin. We confess that we hurt other people with what we say and what we do. Loving God, forgive us. Loving God, forgive us. We confess that we do not take care of our communities or our world as you have called us to do. Loving God, forgive us. Loving God, forgive us. We confess that we participate in the brokenness around us, sometimes without even realizing it. Loving God, forgive us. Loving God, forgive us. <laughs> If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your fear and shame are taken away, and you are made new. Live in the dawn of this new life.
Let us join in the greeting with all of us saying the words and doing the hand and arm actions together. We begin with our arms and hands lifted up. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning in the ninth chapter. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of our Lord. This is like the classic mission story in the Gospels. Jesus sending his disciples out on their first ministry tour. We get for the first time the full list of all 12 disciples. Simon Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas Iscariot. We also get details on how Jesus sent them out. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. And if we'd continued on in this story, reading what came right after we, st we stopped, we would have found even more detail. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that home or town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Jesus gave all these details to the disciples to help them understand what their ministry was all about, to help shape the kind of people they would be, the kind of witness they would offer, and the kind of work they were called to do. Jesus also identified the people to whom he was sending his disciples. Right away at the very beginning, Jesus said, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. On this inaugural mission trip, the trip that set the precedent for all others, Jesus sent his disciples not 
to the Gentiles, not to the Samaritans, but to the Judeans, to their own people. He didn't send them into a foreign mission field. He sent them to their own people. He didn't send them to go fix the problems of those people over there. He sent them to their own people. I can't help but feel that there's a resonance in this for us. We so often imagine that the problem that needs fixing is somewhere else, with other people, with people who don't have the same economic resources or advantages that we have. And so we're used to going on mission trips to serve underprivileged communities. Trips where we accomplish something, where we paint their houses, clean up their yards, put new floors on their community centers. Don't misunderstand me. It's good to help people. But in our suburban, upper Midwestern zeal to do something good, we failed to realize that the problem we really needed to be addressing, the work we really needed to be doing, wasn't over there. It was right here with us, with ourselves. Jesus sent his disciples to their own people. And that's exactly where Jesus is sending us, to our own people. He is sending us to ourselves. Over the past three weeks, racial injustices have been brought to light in a way that white Americans can no longer ignore. Sparked by George Floyd's murder in Minneapolis, protests against the implicit racial biases at the core of our institutions of government and civil society have spread out across our nation and even around the world. Meaningful discussions, heartfelt soul searching, and the desire to make the world a better place have been bubbling up all over. It is in this context that we hear our gospel story today. Siblings in Christ, our congregation, Our Saviors Lutheran in Rochester, Minnesota, is almost entirely white. Our denomination, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, is the whitest denomination in the United States. Because of this, we have been able to ignore racial injustice. Due to the color of our skin, we haven't had to have conversations with our children about how to survive an encounter with the police. Due to the color of our skin, we haven't had to worry about being accused of shoplifting if we go into a store and just browse without buying anything. Due to the color of our skin, we don't have to worry about wearing a hoodie. It's important to note that in the midst of our seeming homogeneity, we do have diversity. We have lived in different places. We have different family structures. We have different sorts of jobs. We have different ailments and struggles and challenges, different gifts and abilities. Yet it's equally important to note that these things are not under threat at the moment. These things don't single us out to receive unjust treatment by the powerful. And so, siblings in Christ, Jesus is sending us, his disciples alive today, not to a foreign mission field, not to do ministry for those people over there, but to ourselves, to do the hard, long overdue ministry work of recognizing and confronting racism. He is sending us to work on ourselves, to work on being honest with ourselves about how racism has infected us, even without us realizing it. He is sending us to work on recognizing and listening to those whose entire existence has been a struggle simply because of the color of their skin. He is sending us to work on trusting the hard, uncomfortable truth that racism does exist and that we participate in it simply because of the color of our skin. Jesus is sending us to make good on the promises we've made to our siblings of color in our core values and our welcome statement. We have lifted up these four core values, our essential identity as a congregation, 
Affirm and claim our families however they are defined. Embrace intergenerational faith formation and innovative ministries. Nurture, equip, and invite people to share their gifts and talents. Profess our faith through serving those in need. But that's not all. What links all of these values together is our opening statement. As a welcoming and inclusive congregation. What do we mean by saying that we are a welcoming and inclusive congregation? Well, let's look to our welcome statement. We welcome new visitors and old friends, longtime Lutherans, Christians from every tradition, and people new to faith. To those who have no church home, want to follow Christ, have doubts, do not believe, you are welcome here. Regardless of age, color, culture, sexual orientation, gender identity, socioeconomic status, marital status, abilities or challenges, join us. You are welcome here. You are welcome to worship, to celebrate and sorrow, to rejoice and recover. This is a place where lives are made new. In these two pieces, we promise that we are a welcoming and inclusive congregation. And it's time to fully live this out. So, this is the work that we have to do. This is the work that Jesus is sending us to do. To recognize the truth about racism. To build up our empathy. To trust the stories that black and brown folk tell us about their experiences with the institutions that undergird our society and to work on changing those structures so that this 400-year-old injustice can finally end. This work, the work of becoming anti-racist, will be hard and at times uncomfortable, and we will make mistakes. And the truth is, it will never be done. But it is necessary. And after all, it is a part of who we are, a welcoming and inclusive congregation where lives are made new. Even in this time of physical separation, we are united with the whole church across time and space. Let us join with the church in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I now invite you to spend time sharing a low and a high from the past week. We also encourage you, as you desire and feel comfortable, to post your lows and or your highs as comments. Please take a few minutes now to share.
As we move into the prayers of our church, I want you to take with you the lows and the highs you shared earlier, and there will be a space for you to name them. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, we gather near and far to pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith and guide your church, that we might be a holy people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who will work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Today, we especially pray for Melissa, Jim, Marsha, Bonnie, Chris, Byron, Bonnie, Wayne, Laura, Jeanette, and all those we name in our hearts now. Feed all who hunger. Empower all whose voices go unheard. And help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy One, you bring you all people to yourself. We give you thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. Today, we especially pray for Lavon, Elaine, and Cody. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we bring before you the highs in our lives those things that are going well, reasons to rejoice, things that we are proud of, and things that we are looking forward to. All the highs that you shared earlier, say those aloud wherever you are now. We also bring our lows, those things that aren't going well, the things that we are ashamed of, the things that we fear, the situations and events that make us sad. At this time, share your lows aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are grateful for the overflowing generosity of all who participate in our congregation's ministry. Your continued financial support, prayers, and acts of service enable us to share Christ's love and form faith from birth to senior saints. We invite you to continue living into the faith practice of giving to the ministry that God has called us to. You may give online through our website by participating in the automated Simply Giving program or by mailing your gift to the church office. Again, thank you for your continued generosity and for the love of Christ that you share with the world. We need that love now more than ever. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Nourish us through your gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love and show empathy to all who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our strength 
and our song. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We now get ready to share the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of Jesus that he gives to us in the bread and wine. But before we can share this meal, we need to set the table. So, make a sacred space and gather up your elements of bread and wine or grape juice as we sing. Now that the table is set, we need to hear the story of this holy meal of communion and promise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Before we can eat and drink the Lord's Supper, like we do for all of our meals, we first need to pray. So, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are now invited to share this meal using the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbor with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made through Christ our Lord. Amen.
As we come to the end of our worship service today, we remember that Jesus gathers us in worship in order to send us out into the world to share God's love. We are sent out as baptized children of God. And to help us remember this, I invite you to dip a finger in some water if you have some nearby and mark yourself or someone else's forehead with a cross saying, remember, you are God's child and God loves you. Hear again this promise from St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs> The peace of Christ is with you always. And also with you. May this week be filled with Christ's love, Christ's justice, and Christ's healing. Thanks be to God.